Okay, so boys, we're going to go through some harder questions here. In the first one here, we're dividing by a fraction. So I've already turned this into time seen by the reciprocal. Turn this fraction upside down. Now we're timesing our tops and timesing our bottoms. 3p times 4 is 12p. And 2 times p squared is 2p squared. So when you go to your calculator, you're putting in 12 over 2 equals. Now when you do that, you're going to get an answer of 6. If you get an answer of 6, just write it down, underline it, and really what it's showing is that that 6 is on the top of the fraction. But if you just think of it as underlining, it'll be on the top of the fraction. Then we're looking at our letters, and we've got a P up the top and a P squared down the bottom. If you wanted to, you could put a little 1 up here. That's up to you whether you do or not. We'll write it in and just see how we go. So the smallest of those two powers is the 1. So we're crossing out P to the power of 1. Now, because we crossed out 1p on the top, we have to cross out 1p on the bottom. We're going to cross out one of those p's, and that will leave us with one of those p's left. So we've got nothing left on the top for p's, and we have p to the power of 1 written on the bottom. You don't have to write the little 1 there. Okay? If you do, in the following line, you can just get rid of it. So that's our answer, 6 over p. That question will be badly done in the exam, right? Because there's going to be a lot of people not sure what to do with the cancelling out. And a lot of people write this answer down as 6p, and it's wrong. It has to be 6 over p. Things have to be in the right spot in the fraction. Okay, in this next question, that 5 at the beginning is a whole number. So whenever you have a whole number and you need it to be a fraction, we always put it over 1. So just write that in with your red pen. We're going to write it down again in this next line so you can see it. Now we're going to look at that dividing by the fraction part. And we're going to turn that into multiplying by the reciprocal. So we keep our first fraction times by the upside down of this second fraction. And now we're multiplying. So times your tops and times your bottoms. 5 times 5p is 25p, and 1 times 3 is 3. Now, if you put 25 over 3 in your fraction here with your calculator, it won't change. It will just stay as it is, so that's our answer. All right, this next one, remember, even though there's a letter here, it still needs to have a fraction. So we're going to put it over 1 because there's no denominator there. We have to give it a denominator of 1. So I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, now in that second part, remember when you're dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the upside down of the second fraction only. So keep your first fraction times by the upside down of the second fraction. So now we're timesing our tops and timesing our bottoms. 5p times 10pt, 5 times 10 is 50, p times p is p squared, and then we have a t there. On the bottom, we have 1 times 7, which is just 7. If you put the 50 over 7 in your fraction key, it won't change. That's our answer. All right, looking at the next one, this one is a multiplication. So we're not turning anything upside down. We go straight into multiplying. Times your tops and times your bottoms. 5ty times 5ky, 5 times 5 is 25. There's only a t, there's no other t's over here, so we'll write the t down. Then we have y times y, that's y squared. And we also have a k. So all the letters have to be there, but if you see the same letter like we have with the y and the y, y times y is y squared. These letters can be written in any order at the end here, as long as the squared is on top of the y. Over. On the bottom we have k times t, and that's kt. Okay, so now the only number we have is 25, so you don't need to go to your calculator. Just keep the 25 up there on the top of the fraction, and draw the bar. 
All right, now with our T's, we can cross out that T and the one on the bottom. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top and vice versa. There's no Y's down here on the bottom, so they're going to stay at the top as they are. But we do have a K on the top and the bottom, so we can cross out the K on the top and the bottom. So the only letters we have left are the Y squared on the top. So write it there. And that's your answer. All right, now we're going to go into a few that have got multiple steps, multiple things happening. So you've got to be very careful with it. In this first one, we have dividing by a fraction. We know we times by its reciprocal. So just keep this first fraction. Turn that into times in by its upside down version. And this just stays, because that's multiplying. We're not turning anything upside down unless it's a division. Okay, so we might just go through these other first steps just so you can see. So if it's a multiplication, just leave it. If you're dividing, you have to turn it into a times and turn the fraction upside down. And over here on number 16, we have a couple of dividing that we're doing. We've got one here and one here. So watch what happens. We keep the first fraction. Instead of dividing by this fraction, we're times in by its upside down version. And the same over here. Instead of dividing that fraction, we're times in by the upside down version. So once we've turned everything into multiplying, it's easy. It doesn't matter how many fractions there are. We're just going to times all the tops together and all the bottoms together. So over here we've got x times 2 times 3x. For 2 times 3, you can use your calculator, that gives you 6. x times x is x squared. On the bottom, 3 times 5x times 7, use your calculator, 3 times 5 times 7. I'm going to check that one. Most of these things you should be doing in your calculator just to make sure you're not making mistakes. So 3 times 5 times 7 is 105. And put your x on the end. Okay, so now we're going back to the calculator because we're doing this bit here. So go to your fraction key on your calculator and type in 6 over 105. And press equals. And it gives you 2 over 35. Extend your bar. Alright, now looking at the letters. We have an x squared up here and an x down the bottom here, which is x to the power of 1. Write it in with your red pen. This is the smaller power. That's the one we cross out. And we cross one of the x's out up here. So you're left with just x to the power of 1. It's up on the top of the fraction. And we can write it without the little 1. That's our answer. Okay, over here we're up to multiplying now. So we're going to times all our tops and all our bottoms. And let's see what we get. Up on the top, the only numbers we have are 6 times 5. That will give you 30. Write all your letters on the end. R, Y, H. And on the bottom, on our calculator, we're going to work out 9 times 15. And that gives you 135. And we've got an R still there. So we write the R down. Alright, now we're going back to our calculator because we're going to do this. So we're going to put in the calculator 30 over 135 and press equals. And it gives you 2 over 9. Extend the bar because we'll need it for the letters. The R on the top and the bottom can cancel out, cross them out. And we're just left with Y and H on the top. That's your answer. And over here on number 16, so this was the hardest question, but as you can see, once you've got it to multiply, it's just multiplying all the tops and multiplying all your bottoms. So the only number we have on the top is 6. So there's nothing to multiply there. Write the 6 down. Now we're going to write all our letters. Just be careful if you've got the letter written twice to look at your indices. We've only got one C, so I'm going to write that down. We've only got one Q. I'm going to write that down. 
We've only got one A, so I'm going to write that down. But we do have F times F, so that's F squared. Again, those letters could be in any order on the top there, as long as the squared is on the F. Okay, down on the bottom, the numbers we have are 5 and 10, so 5 times 10 is 50. And the letters are Q and C, there's no double up, so just write them down. So on your calculator, you're going to put 6 over 50 into your calculator fraction key and press equals. That will turn out to be 3 over 25. Then we're going to cross out our C on the top and the bottom. We're going to cross out our Q on the top and the bottom. And the only letters we have F left are the A, F squared, and that's all on the top. So write it all there. And that's the end of the hardest questions. If you can do those, you can do anything. So good luck with your homework. Make sure, please, that you set them out just as I have. Some of you are starting to spread your work across a page. Keep in columns or two columns on each page. Go straight down the column, just like I'm doing. Equal signs on the left-hand side under each other for each line of your working. Good luck with your homework.